uh, so let us again uh, uh, recall what we were doing. We were looking at the casualty Weierstrass theorem uh, as a first approximation to the great Picard theorem and uh, we also wanted to uh, get a good idea about uh, dealing with the point at infinity. Okay. So, uh, so the point the, the, the idea is you want to talk about when an analytic function is uh, uh, you know for example analytic at infinity okay or or more generally infinity when can you talk about an analytic function having a, a singularity at infinity okay and then classify that kind of singularity and what does it mean to say that the singularity is of a certain type let us say uh, that it is uh, uh, the function is uh, having an essential singularity or a removable singularity or a, a, a pole at infinity we need to understand this okay. and so so in order to study the behavior at infinity you first must th be able to think of infinity as a point okay because uh, you always uh, we, we are used to looking at things uh, 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 close sufficiently close to a point so you basically when you want to study the behavior of a function at a point you need an open neighborhood of that point where the function is defined and for that matter even if the point is a, an isolated singularity you need a deleted neighborhood of the point where the function is defined okay and then you want to study how the function behaves as you approach that point in in various ways okay and you know that's how the classification of singularities goes so for example if you take a point in the finite complex plane okay uh, uh, by that i mean the usual complex plane then uh, if a function uh, an analytic function is defined in a deleted neighborhood of that point then you know that the uh, the way the function behaves as you approach that point can tell you what kind of singularity that is. So as you approach that point if the function goes to infinity that is the modulus of the function goes to infinity then that point has to be a pole uh, as you approach that point if the function goes to a limit a finite limit uh, namely you get a complex number in the limit then the function uh, has a removal singularity at that point and on the other hand if uh, in neither of these happen namely that you do not get a limit then it is an essential singularity. So in the same way I want to be able to say uh, I want to be able to treat the point at infinity okay. So the question is how do you think of the point at infinity and the, uh, the key to that is the Riemann stereographic projection okay uh, which uh, tells you that you can think of the point at infinity as the north pole on uh, uh, the Riemann sphere okay. So, uh, uh, so you le let me uh, draw attention to this diagram that I was drawing uh, towards the end of the last class, the last lecture. So here is the, uh, so you can see here is the uh, um, three dimensional real space R3 and you have the xy plane which is uh, being thought of as the complex plane okay and then instead of the, uh, uh, in, instead of the usual z axis I am calling it the u axis which is the axis perpendicular to the xy plane and uh, uh, the reason is uh, obvious because I want to use reserve the symbol z for x plus iy okay and then what I do is that I take this sphere centered at the origin radius 1 unit okay and that sphere uh, minus the north pole okay which is the point uh, uh, with coordinates uh, one, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1 uh, if you throw that point out the rest of the sphere is mapped homeomorphically onto the complex plane okay by this map phi which is called the stereographic projection and then what you do is that uh, I asked you to check that uh, this map phi is a homeomorphism okay. Now uh, uh, what you want to do is that uh, what is missing in the complex plane is a point uh, that corresponds to infinity. So basically you want to look at C union infinity you want to take this set which is C union infinity and C union infinity is called the uh, extended complex plane okay. And uh, you, your your idea is to send this uh, infinity uh, to uh, the north pole because that is the uh, c union infinity contains c as a subset okay and this c uh, the complex plane is uh, by the stereographic projection homeomorphic to the uh, Riemann sphere minus the north pole okay. So what is missing on the Riemann sphere side is the north pole what is missing on the extended complex plane side is a point at infinity. So what you do is that you send the north pole to infinity under the stereographic projection okay this is a this is a definition you make 
And once you do that you get a bijective map from the Riemann sphere to the extended complex plane okay. And now uh, the point is that this bijective map uh, if you uh, uh, if you if you take the, this map outside the north pole it is a homeomorphism okay. Now what do you do is you do the following thing you put a topology on the extended plane C union in infinity in such a way that this extended map from the full Riemann sphere to the extended plane which is C union in infinity that becomes a homeomorphism okay. So you see uh, what you must understand here is uh, a technical point okay. See I have a topological space and I, I am seeking to add a point at infinity to it okay. This is done in topology uh, uh, for uh, what are called as locally compact Hausdorff spaces okay. So uh, if you have studied this in a first course in topology which you should have uh, uh, and if you have not it is not very difficult to uh, read it up from a standard textbook. So the idea is that you want to uh, uh, compactify a space, you want to uh, make a space compact and uh, what you should do is that you should start with a locally compact Hausdorff space okay and uh, then you add a point at infinity okay and just adding a point at infinity will only give you a set. Uh, uh, okay, but you have to topologize it, and the method and and the method uh, you uh, and the topology that you give is in is the is the is the following. What you do is that for this for the set along with the point at infinity, which will be the one point compactification. Okay, the open sets are going to be not only the usual open sets of your topological space, but to to that you also add complements of uh, compact subsets of your topological space along with that point at infinity okay and these are supposed to give you neighborhoods of the point at infinity okay. So uh, this is how you do the one point compactification and that is exactly what is happening here okay. So uh, uh, so let me write here uh, uh, so topologize uh, uh, topologize uh, 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 the extended plane. C union infinity so that uh, phi uh, becomes a homeomorphism this is what you do okay. So uh, so again let me tell you the, the, the idea the idea is you want to think of the point at infinity okay. And of course, uh, so it has to be a new point. No point on the plane can be thought of as a point at infinity. Okay, uh, you have to add a new point, and we give it the symbol infinity. Okay, and then now you have a set. You have the complex plane, which is a nice topological space. It's even a metric space. It's R two basically. Okay, but then you have added one extra point, and once you add this extra point, you also have to tell me. Uh, uh, what is going to be the topology and the idea is that you make this topology in such a way so that this uh, uh, complex plane along with this extended point at infinity that is the same uh, by same you, I mean homeomorphic to the Riemann sphere okay. So uh, topologically it looks like a sphere okay and at first sight this looks a little complicated because uh, the you know the complex plane is unbounded okay the complex plane is unbounded and what you have done is by adding this point at infinity you have made it compact because you know the extended complex plane is now you, you are trying to put a topology on the extended plane which is a plane plus the point at infinity in such a way that it is homeomorphic to uh, the Riemann sphere but you know the Riemann sphere is compact because it is a closed and bounded subset of uh, Euclidean space it is compact okay. And therefore uh, and you know if, if a topological space uh, is isomorphic uh, uh, topologically isomorphic that is homeomorphic to another uh, topological space which is compact then the original space is also, also compact anything isomorphic any, any, any space homeomorphic to a compact space is compact because uh, the image of a compact set is compact under a continuous map okay. Therefore by what you have done is you have added this point at infinity and you put a topology in such a way that the whole thing becomes compact just adding one point you are making it compact mind you if you remove that point then uh, uh, the space is uh, even unbounded okay. So uh, the, the plane as it is is unbounded okay. So now 
uh, what I want you to, uh, so, so let me write this down, so, so I want you to check uh, 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 the, uh, the, the topology above is the same as the unique one point compactification of C is equal to R2, okay. So uh, this is something that I want you to check, okay, all right. And uh, uh, well, um, in fact, uh, uh, let me even illustrate it for, for a moment because uh, I want you to understand uh, what it is that is going on. Uh, so you know, so you have this, you have this, uh, uh, so let me again redraw this diagram. So I have this, uh, 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 this three dimensional space R3 and I have this x y plane which is uh, for me the complex plane, okay. And then I have this, uh, this uh, third axis which I do not call z, I call it as u, okay. And this is the origin, so I draw this, uh, uh, I draw this sphere of radius uh, 1 unit and look at the surface of the sphere. So, uh, so here is the circle, this is the unit circle in the complex plane and uh, that is the that is the equator for this, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the sphere uh, that came out to be a little, okay. So, so this is the Riemann sphere, okay. And what the stereographic projection does is that there is this north pole and you give me any point uh, on the sphere, on the surface of the sphere, uh, it is mapped on to the the point in the complex plane that is gotten by joining the north pole to that point uh, and uh, uh, by a straight line and looking at the point where the line intersects the plane, okay. So uh, this is the stereographic projection. So it is, it is phi, it is p going to phi of p. So this is the, uh, this is the stereographic projection. Now uh, what I want you to understand is that what is, uh, and this, you, you see the uh, the point at infinity on the complex plane is not visible in the picture, okay. The point at infinity is, is a, the point is really at infinity, you cannot really see it, okay. But uh, its inverse image under the stereographic projection is visible. It is the north pole on the Riemann sphere, okay. And uh, now uh, you see since the, uh, the topology on the external complex plane is a homeomorphism with the Riemann sphere, a neighborhood of the point at infinity in the external complex plane must correspond under this homeomorphism to a neighborhood of the north pole on the Riemann sphere. And what is the neighborhood of the north pole on the Riemann sphere? After all, the, the, the topology on the Riemann sphere is just the induced topology, okay. The Riemann sphere is just the, is just a sphere in, surface of a sphere in three dimensional space R3 and R3 has a standard topology and this inherits the subspace topology. Okay. So, what is a neighborhood of uh, uh, the north pole going to look like? It is going to be a set that contains uh, uh, a disc, uh, the intersection of a three dimensional open disc centered at the, centered at the north pole, which is what an open disc in three spaces with the surface of the sphere. So, what you are going to get is that you are going to get, you are going to get something like this. So, let me, let me again change color uh, uh, to something else. Uh, uh, so so you see, see basically uh, uh, a yeah, yeah neighborhood of the north pole is going to look like this. This is how a the neighborhood of a north pole is going to look like on the Riemann sphere, okay. And this uh, by our uh, definition is, the, its image should give you a neighborhood of the point at infinity on the external complex plane. So that helps us to think of a neighborhood of infinity on the complex plane, okay, uh, uh, on the external complex plane. So what is the image of this? So you know if you draw the image of this, see this, this bounding, uh, the, uh, well of course you know I am, <coughs> uh, I, I, I should not include this bounding circle, okay, uh, because uh, uh, well, 
then it will become a compact neighborhood okay but i but throw the don't worry about the boundary okay so if you look at the boundary circle okay so if you want you know we can i don't know if the whole of it will go away Pro yes it does so let me put dotted lines like this okay to tell you that it's actually an open set okay now this boundary dotted line which is a circle the image of that under the stereographic projection is going to give me a huge circle in the complex plane okay so if i if i draw this uh, the, the the image of this uh, that circle i'm going to get this i'm going to get something like this this is what the image of that dotted circle on the riemann sphere is after you do the stereographic projection on the plane okay and what about uh, um, smaller and as a, as the circles if you make this dotted circle on the riemann sphere smaller this circle on the plane which is the image of that circle under the stereographic projection becomes larger okay so the image of this shaded region is going to be the exterior of this uh, this dotted circle on the complex plane so you know what i'm going to get is i'm going to get uh, 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 you know so you know le, uh, so i'm going to get something like this i'm i'm going to get all this everything outside i'm going to get this is what i'm going to get on the complex plane this is the image of uh, uh, that uh, that disk uh, that that open neighborhood of the north pole on the riemann sphere uh, its image in the complex plane is the exterior of a circle okay so what this tells you is it tells you the following thing it tells you that the neighborhood of uh, a neighborhood of the point at infinity on the extended plane should be thought of as the exterior of uh, a circle in the complex plane okay so uh, so so that is the reason that when you try to write a neighborhood of infinity uh, in the complex plane you write it in the form mod z greater than 1 by delta okay you have to write it the, the exterior of a circle centered at the origin okay the equation for a circle centered at the origin is mod z equal to r where r is the radius and you want uh, uh, r to be sufficiently large and you want to look at points outside the circle so that means mod z should be greater than r okay and instead of taking r large you can replace r by 1 by delta where delta is small okay therefore the uh, what this tells you the, the riemann stereographic projection tells you that in the extended complex plane a neighborhood of infinity is just the exterior of a circle okay and what is it that corresponds to smaller and smaller neighborhoods of infinity it corresponds to the exteriors of larger and larger circles the larger your circle is and you take the exterior of that that means that you are getting closer to infinity okay a larger circle means uh, if you take the exterior of a larger circle it means you are going to a smaller neighborhood of infinity and how do you how do you actually visualize this you visualize this by looking at the what it translates to in terms of this stereographic projection on the riemann sphere on the riemann sphere you get smaller and smaller and smaller disks uh, close close to the north pole so so it does make sense okay so <coughs> so the moral of the story is that uh, so let me write it here uh, it's very very important neighborhood of infinity in uh, the extended complex plane c union infinity is mod z greater than r uh, if you if you if you want you can write it as 1 by delta r sufficiently large delta sufficiently small okay and the larger you take r you're going to a smaller neighborhood of infinity okay of the point at infinity okay and uh, because of this uh, stereographic projection uh, uh, this is uh, very easy to now visualize okay okay now <coughs> now given this uh, we can now uh, we, are, we are in a good position to uh, define uh, the limit uh, of uh, the limit as uh, z tends to the point at infinity okay so um, i think uh, uh, let me see whether i have done this uh, uh, no i have not done it before so so let me so let me do this so so let me anyway uh, let me anyway recall <coughs> you see so let's go back to this this definition what is the meaning of limit as z tends to z not 
for z0 an ordinary complex number it means that your 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 mind you z0 is fixed it's a fixed complex number z is a variable and you're letting the variable z tend to z0 and this is happening on the plane okay and what does that mean it means that you're making the distance between z and z0 which is mod z minus z0 you're letting that to go to zero okay and which in terms of uh, 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 delta notation is that you are looking at this mod z minus z0 less than delta which is a sufficiently small open disk centered at z0 radius delta the interior of that disk okay and you are making delta small enough okay that is what it means. Now what I want to do is that uh, I want to translate this definition uh, and <coughs> or rather give a version of this definition for which uh, z0 is actually the point at infinity okay because I want to make sense of limit as z goes to infinity okay and how does one do that so one uses this <coughs> uh, one uses this uh, uh, the, the, the intuition that comes uh, in the last line of the definition namely you letting z to tend to z0 is supposed to mean that you are looking at a you are allowing z to vary in a small neighborhood of z0 okay that is what limit z tends to z0 means all right. In the same way if you now think uh, letting z tend to infinity should mean that you should allow z to vary in a small neighborhood of infinity okay so that is what it should mean. So uh, but now you know how to think of a small neighborhood of infinity a small neighborhood of infinity is the exterior of, of a large circle. Uh, on the complex plane centered at the origin. So now you have a very easy way to give a definition as to what it means when uh, z tends to infinity. So let me write that down. Uh, so let me write it here. Uh, uh, we may define, we may thus define, define uh, limit z tends to infinity for z in mind you now z should be <coughs> now z is in the uh, uh, for z in the uh, extended complex plane which is <coughs> uh, or let me just keep for z in uh, uh, c union infinity as uh, z uh, as mod z greater than r for r sufficiently large and r tending to infinity okay or as mod z greater than 1 by del 1 by delta for delta sufficiently small and delta tending to 0 okay. So this is how you can define what limit z tends to infinity means okay. You are allowing z to come closer and closer to infinity that means you are restricting z to be in a neighborhood of infinity and you know what a neighborhood of infinity looks like it is the exterior mod z greater than r of a circle of sufficiently large radius and if you want to get it to get more closer to infinity uh, then you must increase r you must take the exterior of larger and larger circles okay. Now <coughs> um, well uh, uh, let me let me go back to something that I completely forgot uh, which I said I would do and I did not. So here it is about this check here see this check was that the, the topology that you put on the extended complex plane uh, so that uh, the stereographic projection is a homeomorphism is uh, the same topology that you would give to the uh, one point compactification and that is correct because in the one point compactification uh, the topology is such that uh, the open sets are uh, the usual open sets of the space plus you also take complement of compact subsets of the space and add the point at infinity. And if you look at the stereographic projection okay uh, what is an open uh, uh, what is an open neighborhood of infinity an open neighborhood of infinity in the external complex plane corresponds to an open neighborhood of the north pole on the Riemann sphere okay and if you take an open neighborhood of the 
uh, uh, the north pole on the uh, Riemann sphere, mind you, it is a complement of a compact set because its complement on the Riemann sphere is a closed set and it is a closed subset of the Riemann sphere is already compact, okay. So, it is already compact. So, it is a complement of a compact set, okay. So, this argument should tell you that uh, this check is, uh, is correct. I mean, uh, this is how you check it, okay. So, uh, so that is what I forgot. So, I just wanted to go back to it. Now, let us come back to this, uh, this business of uh, uh, defining a limit as z tends to infinity. Now, now that you have this, you can now for example define uh, the limit of uh, uh, for example say uh, uh, you, you can take uh, uh, the limit of a function as z tends to infinity, okay. So uh, for example uh, limit uh, z tends to infinity f of z is equal to lambda which is a complex number means that given uh, epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that uh, the distance between f of z and lambda can be made smaller than epsilon whenever the distance between z and infinity can be made small enough which is the same as saying that uh, mod z can be made larger than 1 by delta. So this is how you define the limit as z tends to infinity uh, of a function uh, uh, being a finite value, finite complex number, okay. And you, you see, so you must understand the limit as z tends to infinity f of z is lambda means that the function values fz, their distance from lambda which is mod fz minus lambda can be made as small as you want. How small? As small as epsilon which is already given to you, that epsilon could have been any small, okay. You can make it as small smaller than that epsilon provided you choose z sufficiently close to infinity and what is choosing z sufficiently close to infinity you have to choose z outside a sufficiently large circle uh, in the complex plane centered at the origin and that is exactly this condition okay uh, that is this condition that mod z minus uh, uh, mod z is greater than 1 by delta for delta sufficiently small okay. So uh, mind you in order to say this uh, it's, uh, it is it is implicit that the function should be defined in a neighborhood of infinity. That means the function should be defined outside uh, uh, a circle, okay. The function should be defined in a neighborhood of infinity. Of course, if a function is not defined uh, in the neighborhood of a point, there is you cannot talk about the limit of the function as you approach that point, okay. Because to take a limit, you must be able to approach the point. And if you, if this is to be a well-defined limit, then you should be able to approach that point, point in all directions. Basically, you need to allow that, uh, allow the variable to approach that point from a neighborhood of the limiting point. In this case, the limiting point is a point at infinity. A neighborhood of that is the exterior of uh, a circle in the complex plane. And so, what you must understand is, it's it's very very important. So let me uh, let me write it in a different color. Uh, 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 F needs to be defined in mod z greater than r for some r greater than 0. Otherwise, this definition does not make sense, okay. At least this is, uh, you need you need to require this of f if you want to study properties of f such as analyticity, okay. So, um, now, <coughs> now what I want to say is that, <coughs> so suppose you are uh, looking at a function f which is analytic and which uh, is defined outside a, uh, uh, in a neighborhood of infinity namely outside a circle uh, in, a co in, the, in, the, in the complex plane, okay. Then you see that infinity uh, becomes a singular point, it, it becomes an isolated singularity, okay. It is because the function has been assumed to be analytic uh, in a neighborhood of infinity, okay. Therefore infinity if you take a deleted neighborhood of infinity in the extended complex plane, you will simply get the exterior of the exterior of a sufficiently large circle in the complex plane and there the function is analytic. Therefore, uh, the infinity becomes a singular point and then now you can talk about whether this singular point is removable or essential or uh, <coughs> uh, a pole, okay. And 
the, uh, the standard way this is done in a first course in complex analysis is that you study the behavior of the function at infinity, uh, you study the behavior of f of z at, at infinity by looking at the behavior of f of 1 by z at 0, this is what you do. But what I want to tell you is that that is the same as uh, what we are doing now, okay. Uh, so there are two definitions and, and we need to reconcile them, okay and uh, we will try to do that next.